Praise God. It was uh, really awesome this last year. I think uh, I shared last time I was here how we had to get very innovative when we went to the nations in 2021 that summer. Many, many missions organizations. In fact, I couldn't find any short-term mobilization organizations that were going. All of them just suspended their trips. But the Lord really just challenged me that there was a way to harvest, and He wanted Global Ventures to find that way in Him. He wanted those new and innovative ideas uh, just to be tapped into, and He was going to give us a divine download. So when we we stepped out, that's exactly what began to happen. He began to show us that we could do virtual crusades, whereas you couldn't in Ecuador right after their worst hit of COVID, you couldn't gather people legally or in Albania. And Albania is one of those extended 1040 window, most unreached territory nations. Um, you know, you couldn't gather people in, in any of those nations. And then we were in Peru at the very end of uh, 2021. So what we did is we sought out uh, different talk shows and talk show personalities and performers that were well known. The next thing you know, we were being booked on the leading talk shows in those nations. And we were advertising about this festival of hope, times of hope that would come. And sure enough, people far and wide began to tune in over all the social media platforms. We brought in really amazing prizes. They had just come out with the PlayStation 5, I believe it was, and they couldn't get them easily at all in those nations. Where you start advertising, you could win some of these things, and especially in a dire state of COVID, and boy, that draws people in. He that went of souls is wise, right? Amen. I believe because we were obedient in 2021, when we started doing crusades again, here in 2022, uh, in person, that we saw the harvest on that obedience unto the Lord. Because in Zambia, Zambia, we had an all-time record of souls for the continent of Africa in just a few days, over 62,000 born again. And then we turned around in that next month in Albania, all-time record of souls for anywhere in Europe. And we're talking Albania. Man, Albania, you know, has not been the most popular place to go and do missions. In fact, uh, you know, you, you hear stories, but you know, the people are precious and people are hungry. In this hour around the, the globe, what we're seeing is people are hungering for God like never before. And not a form of religion, not a form uh, denying the power. I'm talking about the true and the living God of the universe that still moves mightily and does miracles and will meet them right where they're at, that will cut through all the fluff and give them the real stuff because He is. Is the eternal one. Oh, that custom designed them to, to abide in him, to have purpose in him. And do you know that's the truth for each and every one of us? Each and every one of you are custom designed by God to do something that no one else can do in the exact way that he orchestrated the masterpiece of you to be and flow in him in that way in and on this planet. Your life matters and the way you maximize that divine design is by placing your life in him and allowing him to redeem the time, allowing him to flow through you in ways that only he knows that he will do, and if we yield to him, he makes it known unto us. Many people go through life and they approach life out of their intellect and their mind, and your mind can never grasp the fullness of God. No, it can't. I've sat and witnessed to people before, and uh, you know, they would sit there, and, and actually from my wife's homeland, we were flying back into Quebec, and there was a young lady that had been traveling abroad, and the, the culture there really loves getting out and seeing the world, and especially at young ages. And uh, as we were flying back in, I knew, I just sensed, you do this long enough, you can sense instantly uh, a lot of times where someone's at spiritually. And I knew she just was lost as a goose. I knew she was unsaved. In fact, Quebec, Canada, uh, just statistically, is the largest unreached people group in the Northern Hemisphere, the Western Northern Hemisphere, that, you know, 7 million French plus and I believe it's like less than 1% Christian. It's, it's just crazy. But I knew instantly she did not know the Lord, and I started sharing. She said, well, what do you do? Why do you travel? And I just started sharing one miracle after another, after another. 
And she just kind of looked at me like in disbelief. And I said, that's how we know Jesus is real. Buddha cannot do these things. Mohammed cannot do these things. The, the Hindu gods cannot work miracles. Listen, I have, I have sought out far and wide gurus, high-level Buddhist monks. I mean, I've even gone toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hunted down voodoo priests and witch doctors to try to find someone that has worked a dark miracle. And you might hear of it somewhere, but I've never met anyone face-to-face, -face, and I've been all over the globe. I've never met someone that operates out of the dark side, no matter what their religion, their affiliation, that can produce a genuine miracle of healing. I've not seen it. The opposite happened when I was in Haiti. He said, yeah, I can do miracles, but all he could do is get the demon power that was in and on him on them. And them running out of his little domicile with their arms flailing and screaming, well, dear Lord, that's not a miracle of healing. Who wants a miracle like that? One that binds you up. No, our God frees to the uttermost, liberates, gives new beginnings, gives brand new starts. Hallelujah. So, as I was talking to this young lady, I said, yeah, I said, and I, I told the story of seeing a little girl healed and then a little boy and shared some of the amazing things. And I said, listen, if you look not at your mind, but if you look down in your heart, what does your heart tell you about Jesus? I said, because Jesus said he's the only way to God, the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to God because she tried to, you know, oh, as long as you believe something, it will be good, and it, all some things will bring you to the same place. No, that's, that's Hinduism. That's a lie. That's a lie. Just believing in something is not good enough. If I want to go to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, I need to beeline for that area. I don't need to go east towards Orlando, right? It doesn't help me that I'm just going somewhere. No, I got to go the right direction. And that's the truth of Jesus. He wasn't a liar. He wasn't a lunatic, as C.S. Lewis so eloquently wrote. He truly was the absolute truth, so he had to be and always shall be Lord. Always. And so she said to me when I asked her, what happens when you look down in your heart? She said, when I look in my head, everything I've heard and been taught, and I, I say, how can it be true? But when I look down in my heart and I hear about these miracles you're sharing, my heart wants to believe. I said, focus in on that. Amen. And do you know, it was moments later, she went from rejecting moments before to when I had her zero in on that, she was praying the prayer of salvation, asking Jesus to be her personal Lord and Savior. Well, I turned over and looked to Martine. She was sitting by the boys. Somehow we were spread out in this flight, and this young girl was, was sat by me. I said, baby, you know French. Get over here. You're going to disciple her. And I fell asleep. <laughs> I did my part. I wanted to Jesus know. I knew her being discipled in her mother tongue would be most effective and all. But it was beautiful. And do you know, it's the case of the world right now. Most of the world is looking for answers with all that we've been through, all that's gone on. This is the greatest day and hour of harvest on the planet. And uh, just want to encourage you, um, if you were stirred by any of the videos, if you feel like you have a longer term call to the harvest, we call it School of Missions because people can relate to that better, but check out the School of Missions. Grab the brochure out at the table uh, or, or go to the website. If anything during my sharing today stirs you, um, there's a QR code we can bring up. If you're stirred to partner, if you're stirred to go on a mission trip, I'm thrilled about the, the I'm going to call y'all the Divine Nine. I believe it's nine that are signed up for proof. The Divine Nine, they're going to be there, praise God. And we're going to harvest mightily in South America, great and mighty things. But if you're stirred to join the Divine Nine or maybe another uh, trip that we're going on uh, stirs your heart, we're going to Peru, Brazil, we're going to Romania. And then the end of the year, we're going to some very interesting places. I don't like saying tough because in God, nothing's too tough. 
Interesting, northern India and Bangladesh. Oh, and we have harvested in those two nations, those two areas of those nations before, northern India and then Bangladesh. It is not too hard for God. We see the Hindus, we see the Buddhists, we see the Muslims come to Him. And not just one or two out underneath the banana tree, by the thousands when we come in and share the gospel. And I'm talking not just, uh, in a, in, not just in a church setting, I'm talking in school settings at times. We'll hit 30, 40, as many as 80 schools in one trip. Our teams subdivide and we go in and present a cultural exchange. Everybody around the world wants American culture. But right smack dab in the middle of that, guess what's the foundation of our American culture? It's our Christian roots. It's our Judeo-Christian beliefs. So we preach Jesus. And right there in school, whole schools will stand to their feet. And I'm talking right after they would have prayed, uh, said their pledge of allegiance and prayed Buddhist prayers. They'll stand on their feet and ask Jesus, first time hearing, they'll ask him to be Savior and Lord. We'll have principals, we'll have teachers get saved, get healed by the power of Jesus right there. Because that's what God's doing in this day and this hour. If we'll dare to step out and do things in an uncommon way in this hour, because God is moving afresh and anew, and oh, the harvest is plenteous. We had that all-time record in Albania, just shy of 5,000 making decisions for Christ here in uh, July this summer. And they told us, they said, we have not seen souls saved like this in this amount since communism fell and people like Lester Summerall came in. There was a great hit of just the power of God and the outpouring of the Lord's Spirit as the gospel went forth and thousands were saved. But they said it kind of plateaued off and it's been years. But this is a new model. This is a new strategy of heaven of how we're going to do it. When we fill that plaza in El Basan, just right outside their capital, beautiful, beautiful historic city, and we filled it, and it was with those that were Orthodox, and it was with those that were Muslims, and you had Orthodox and Muslims and agnostic atheists side by side, all of them experiencing the gospel, and many of them saying yes to Jesus. Man, it wasn't revival time, it was harvest time. The outpouring of God's glory was apparent and powerful and grand. And it was right in Albania where Andrew, that's where that deaf ear, on the video, when that older man inside a little building, his ear opened and he had that, I mean, it was a crooked smile, but to me, the most, one of the most beautiful smiles you could see. Amen. It doesn't matter if teeth are there, if they're missing. Man, when they're smiling under the presence of Jesus because Jesus has just saved them, Jesus has just healed them. That's the most glorious smile I could ever see because it shines from the inside out. You see it from their spirit, man, their heart. They've just passed from death to eternal life, and they'll never be the same again. Glory be to God. So if you're stirred any time during this, I, you know, an evangelist, we just get to preaching. You can, you can scan the QR code. I don't know if it made it up on the screen or not. If you want to partner with us, we're going into the biggest that we're about to unveil at our 25th uh, anniversary banquet, a really cool initiative, things that God's been stirring in our hearts for years. How many know um, He wants us to go from 2.4 million face-to-face -face salvations to I believe we're going to see the day face-to-face -face, over 24 million saved, 25 million. I believe that. Thank you, Lord. And then through mass media and social media, hundreds of millions, God is raising up an army. Man, our, our lifetime goal is raising up a thousand frontline harvesters that will just radically reap the harvest like never before. So we got a whole beautiful uh, night of celebrating all that God's done, but then unveiling this whole new initiative that we're going to be launching that will carry us in near years and if the Lord tarries decades to come Amen. in reaping His harvest. Man, we need to be mindful. We need to be intentional. I was saying this uh, uh, just last night riding in with Pastor Jack and Jack the Third and um, Luke was, and I was so honored. Man, three guys to come get me. I mean, it was awesome. Pastor and his sons and you know, if our military can be so, so intentional, not just intentional, strategic and I mean, dialed in, how much more 
Should we, the body, the living body of the living God of the universe, alive on this earth, representatives, ambassadors of him, how much more should we be so dialed in when the work we do is an eternal work? It will never end because we truly are plundering hell and populating heaven. Amen. 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 So if you're stirred and you want to uh, join in in any way, you want to stay connected to us, you can pull up the Reach podcast. And man, you can hear teaching and preaching that will fire you up along these lines and what's happening in the nations. Uh, the devil, you know, the devil made a play for the world the last few years. You know that. He made a play for the world. He wanted to wipe out a huge swath of earth's population, the devil. But he failed miserably because he doesn't have the last say and he definitely doesn't have the last laugh. Do you know who has the last say and the last laugh? Our God that sits on the throne. The scripture talks about he is the God that sits on the throne and it says, and he laughs. Woo, glory to God. His laugh is last and his laugh is longest and loudest because he's the only one that has the final say. And we win. We're going to see the massive harvest of souls, the devil, his agenda, and his dark uh, plans are not going to come to full fruition. No. The church of the living God is the staying power of God, the staying force of God by his power by his miracles, by his authority, dominion on this earth. And that's what we possess. That's what we walk in. We don't have to back up from anyone. Amen. That's why I can go before voodoo priests. That's why I can stand down witch doctors. And that's why we have led at least two of those that practice the dark arts to the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. right there on the spot. They said, no, no one's ever shared this message with me. One of them was a shaman deep in the jungles of Peru. And he had practiced many, many years. He said, no one. And I'd always get a solid pastor to go with me. And those pastors would always say, no pastor in all of Peru or all of Kenya or all of Ethiopia dare go talk to a shaman or a witch doctor. I said, well, the history's going to change. We're about to make history. And you'll do it from here on out because you've got the same Jesus inside you that I do. Amen. If John G. Lake did these things, how dare we revel in looking back as if it was some sort of mystical level of the anointing that he walked in or Wigglesworth walked in. No, it's the same Holy Ghost inside you and me. Amen. Turn with me to Mark, the fifth chapter. We find a very powerful passage of Scripture as you're turning there, if you scan the QR code, or if you're like me, if you're a hard copy guy and you're like, man, I want to hook up, I want to go on a trip, I want to check out school admissions, or I want to partner in prayer and finances, whatever it is, grab one of these, and it's got everything in a, a card to do so in the back, or you can just go through the app, GV app on all platforms. But uh, we do want to, you to stay abreast of what God's doing in the nations, because as uh, Oral Roberts had the plaque on his, uh, what was it, no little plans, no small plans made here on his desk, no small plans made at Global Ventures, no little plans made here. Amen. We're expecting to do this thing. Amen. It's time not just to patty cake or go through the motions, it's time to make waves on this earth. The wave of heaven by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is flowing through us. And everywhere we go, it shall be our ground, Amen. It, the earth in the fullness belongs to the Lord, right? Amen. And that's the attitude Jesus had when he sailed across uh, the lake and said, we're going to go to the other side. The devil tried to wipe out the boats, and actually there were other little boats with him at the end of Mark 4. You find in one swoop he wanted to wipe them all out, but Jesus simply stood up, rebuked the devil. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're on earth or sea, you know that angel's going to come down and stand one day and it says one foot's going to be on the earth, the other's going to be on the sea. It doesn't matter earth or sea, anywhere on this globe or even in the air, you have authority. Amen. You have dominion. So Jesus, you know, said, how come you're doubting? How come you're afraid? And boy, these are commercial fishermen thinking they're going to die. And Jesus says, peace be still, knocks that devil in the head, instantly everything's stilled. 
Jesus was more focused on what was on the other side of the lake than he was stilling the storm. The storm really was a smoke screen. It was meant to try to take him out and them out because the devil didn't want Jesus to get to the devil's champion, his trophy. But Jesus had purpose in going to the other side. See, this wasn't the typical place where he would go and minister to the Jews. When he went in Mark 5 to the other side, this was the Gentile region of the Holy Land, if you will. He was there in the edge of Decapolis in the uh, that area of, of the Gentiles. The reason we know it was the area of the, Gen the Gentiles is alone, just looking at the pigs, you don't have thousands of pigs farmed in an area that's predominantly Jewish. You know what I mean. It's not kosher. But, uh, but these folks in this area, they were there in the Gadarenes, or you, there's a few different names of that. Jesus shows up. This man sees Jesus, runs to him, falls down in worship. I believe the King James Version is accurate. The man runs because he sees Jesus and he knows instantly he's his answer. He sees the solution. He's his help. The demon, Legion, many of us know this story, Mark 5. In fact, I'll just read a little bit. How many believe it's good to read the Word? I'm going to just read a little bit, probably a little more than a little bit. One thing that bothers me, I know it's not here, West Houston, CC, but boy, a lot of churches don't read the Word much anymore. You know, so let's just read a little bit of the Word. Then he went out from there and came to his own country. Excuse me, let me make sure I'm one chapter ahead. Let me jump back. First one, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him a man of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him. Say no one. Not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles, shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. <laughs> and all day, and he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Now, this was not just, Norval Hayes used to say, lower level devil. Anybody ever know, know who Norval Hayes is? But he would joke about, oh, that's just a lower level devil. <laughs> Don't mess with those squirrely, flaky things. Cast them out, you know. And he saw Lester Summerall coach him in how to cast them out. He didn't know really what he was doing at first. But this guy right here, this legion, this is not a lower level devil situation. How many know they tried everything they knew naturally? Humanity tried to bind him with chains, with fetters, and he could not be bound. He could not be helped. He was howling. He was naked. He was running through the tombs, cutting himself. Nothing could help. You know, Dr. Cho, how many remember Dr. Yonggi Cho, largest church in the world there for a while? Or, you know, longest time they said another church got up there, might have surpassed it. But uh, he said this about casting demons out. He said, first cast demon out. Demon no go, then cast demon and person out. Talking about being in services. <laughs> Well, amen. We have authority. If that person wants that demon, and some people do want the demon, you know that. I'm convinced this man that had legion didn't want the demon. Because legion knew that's Messiah, and I've been around people that are demonized and into the things of darkness enough that there is enough of that person's will intact that they almost, it's like a symbiotic relationship where they can choose and step towards their answer, but the demons freak out about it. Right. This legion didn't want to run up right on, on Jesus, but this man knew Jesus was his answer. And he was reaching out, fell down, worshiped, called out to Jesus. Let's keep reading. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. I'm reading from the New King James. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, now this is the legion, the demons, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is legion for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter them. 
And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled. They told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then there came... Uh, then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Say, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Guys, I don't care how bad the situation is. I don't care what the experts have said. I don't care what the leading doctor of this and that has tried to declare in and over you or over your loved ones or over any situation. I don't care what governments say. I said it last time I was here, coming through the last few years, I'm just looking now. I don't put my faith in anything save Jesus and His, His will. Amen. Amen. And my eyes, man, I'm not on, I'm on Jesus' side. I'm not going to allow the world or ideologies of darkness to try to divide me against my brothers and sisters. I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm going to be like the Father. He loved the world and gave the Son. I love the world. I'm not going to be political in the sense of, man, I'm not going to cause, I'm going to go vote because that's my legal right. But I'm not going to draw lines, battle lines. I know what I believe and I stand on the Word. And I live accordingly and I vote accordingly and I encourage you to do the same. But man, I want to reach people from all sides because Jesus, God the Father, loved the world. Amen. Now, it doesn't mean for a moment that I'm going to change who and what I am. It's interesting if you read, do we have that one scripture in the Amplified Classic Version? I want to read this to you. Verse 7 and 8 of what we already read. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? What is there in common between us? What is there in common between us? Do you know what? We should look very different from the world. But at the same time, we should love the world with all our hearts. That's what was so attractive about Jesus. He looked altogether different than the Sanhedrin of his day. The disciples altogether, the 12, the apostles altogether different. Man, they marveled and took note. These dudes have been with Jesus. They weren't officially learned. They weren't brought up in rabbinical school. But these guys taught just like Jesus with authority and dominion. Amen. And we don't know what to do with them. Amen. Man, that should be the modern day remnant church. That should be you and me. It is who we are, really. It is who you need to see yourself as. Not just who you're becoming. You are that, so you live that way. As you look in the mirror, as you think of yourself, if you visualize who you are, you are a person of power. You are a, a, a dude or a dudette of dominion. <laughs> you're a person of, I mean, you walk around in authority. I like to say that we are the divine enforcers. Now, I'm in Texas, so I think I have a little bit of creative license here. When I talk about, I'm going to talk a little bit about a cowboy movie that I really love. I'm not going to say the name of it. It's salty, so get the edited version. But in there, old Wyatt Earp walks into the bar, and he lets the guy dealing the cards say, I want you to know you're sitting in my chair. You know what I'm talking about? And he pretty much gets that guy out of their, that chair and he takes dominion of that whole place in that movie. Do you know that's what the devil tries to do? He tries to sit in what's our chair. Our chair of authority, our chair of dominion, while all along we are the one called to live and move in that level of authority and power and not back down from no one. And I know that's not proper English, from anyone. We don't have to fear anyone. When I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the leading witch doctor in all of Kenya, his name was Kefara, 30 minutes out drive, drive out, 
the Holy Spirit rose up in me and said, take authority. Did I share this story last time I was with you? Take authority over the demons he operates with so they won't warn him that you're coming. See, I wanted to get in there and film it. You know why? It'd make a great show. The power of light overcoming darkness. Man, I took authority over those devils. They couldn't operate. No, the Holy Spirit, as quick as he revealed that to me, he revealed don't stay past nightfall. You got to obey the Holy Spirit. Amen? Do you know his wives? He had a harem. This guy was wealthy. People would drive 10, 12 hours away, pay him big money, and the real deal, you, you want to know what they were paying money? It wasn't to bless them. It was to curse their opposition, to curse their competition. That's how the dark arts work. It's not a blessing. Uh -uh. It's the curse business. Oh, hallelujah. But we can't be cursed. You know that? We can't be duped. We can't be downed. We are seated. If we're in Christ Jesus, baby, we are seated in heavenly places. I mean, not off to the side of the corner of heaven. I mean, smack dab right at the right hand of God Almighty. We are seated in Jesus. God the Father looks over at God the Son and sees us right there in Him. The real mystery of the Trinity isn't three and one and one and three. It's how we got right in the middle of them, Him. Well, He put us there. That's not sacrilegious. That's sanctity. That's holy. God eternally made us one with Him. That's why we are agents, vessels of glory. That's why we walk in the things that Wigglesworth walked in and John G. Lake walk in, walked in. We don't have a second-rate Holy Ghost. We don't have a junior Holy Ghost. Young people, our kids' church, no, they don't walk in less than what the best walked in. They walk in the same. In fact, the younger you are many times, most of the time, all the time, you're much quicker to learn these things and walk in these things because you don't have the negative forces of doubting religion trying to talk you out of who you really are. You really are a superman, a superwoman, really a supernatural man, a supernatural woman. God lives in and on you. What is there in common with us? I don't like that there's not a difference in a lot of the church world today and a lot of the world today. There ought to be a distinct, tangible, I'm not talking about even wearing a suit. I'm talking about what you wear day to day supernaturally. That you step on the scene. Guys, I've been in Burma when we shouldn't gather people and we packed out a little house. And a man that was the, he was a former admiral, <laughs> Admiral of Burma. And he came, they had tried to share with him. He had never received, of course he was Buddhist. And he, after my teaching, said, yes, I want to receive Jesus. And he needed a miracle and had me pray for him. And God began to manifest and he had had a stroke. And all of a sudden he, he could move in ways he hadn't before. The miracle was manifesting. But I said, why did you receive? I know your neighbor is a strong believer. I know he invited I know he shared with you. I know he invited you. He said, as you spoke, something was in your face, coming forth from your face, that I knew you absolutely were speaking words of heaven, words of truth. Guys, there is something in and on us. In and on us, right? In and on us. Praise be to God that the world sees when we're walking in it. And the devil is afraid of it. He wants to try to talk us out of it. He wants to distract us. He wants to try to discourage us out of it. He wants to try to deceive. But honey, he's not going to do it. No, no, no. Not on our watch. Not on your watch. You are a supernatural man. You're a supernatural woman. John G. Lake would get dressed in his finest suit and look in the mirror and point at himself and says, say, God lives in that man. God has come to live in that man. Guys, whether you talk to yourself in the mirror or not, you need to visualize that. You need to talk in your own heart. If you don't say it out loud, I don't mind saying it out loud because it releases power. God lives in you. You're a world shaker, a history maker. We don't have to fear what's going on today. 
We are the divine enforcers. They're waiting for us to show up on the scene to say, uh uh, no, you're not sitting in that chair anymore. You're not, you're not run, running roughshod, the folks in this, this saloon. There's a new sheriff in town. We're taking control and we're going to serve some new wine. I'm going to just say that. There ought to be a difference. Something's wrong when my boys go to a Christian school and conversation is about should we drink or should we not? Or should we live this way or should we not? Thank God. You know, you can't make up people's minds for them, but there should be a definitive difference in the people of the living God and the world. I'll say what Kenneth E. Hagin used to say. I drink all I want to. The thing is, is I don't want to because I got the new wine. I got the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not going to condemn someone. Someone can be born again and, you know, uh, boy, it's hard for me to even say it because I just don't believe born again folks need to be sipping that which is dead when we're filled with life. There needs to be a difference. There was an instant difference. The moment Jesus stepped off the boat in this area, the people didn't know how to take it. We'll read on here. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid, and those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. They didn't get it. They were confused. Now listen, I'm going to make a statement here. The turn of the year, I was praying, preparing for the first message I'd preach in the new year. And the Lord showed me some of the things going on in our society right now. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to there is a dark crowd that aligns themselves with the dark agenda of the devil. I'll leave it at that. But do you know, I want to win as many of those people out of darkness into light. I want to see Saul to Paul conversions. Because some of them, some of them, their hearts are, are, they're ripe. They're ripe, they're hurting, they're broken. They, they're not buying it. It's not adding up. They're wondering, there's got to be more to this. It's, it's two plus two, and it's not working. And man, I want to make sure that I am shining forth the light and the love of Jesus with uncompromised truth in a way that will free them. I want the perfect balance of truth uncompromised with the love of God that caused the people to surround Jesus. I want them to be drawn to me. And that's what the living remnant church is to look like today. Amen. We're to be ready to reach anyone. I don't care what their affiliation, I don't care what their background, I don't care what they've done, what they haven't done, I don't care what they've been through. Guys, in Oklahoma, I got to go back a few times into maximum security and look, and I looked at Sean Sellers, the guy that had played Dungeons and Dragons in the you know years of the 80s, me growing up, and had killed his own mom and daddy because he had got off into full-blown Satanism. But do you know what? When he went into jail, before he went into his trial, sentencing, and all of that hearings, someone gave him a Bible, and he wound up being introduced to Jesus. He was in there writing things, writing articles and materials about how Jesus was so real. Any given day before he was executed, any given day or night, I would have gladly say, you can let me in with absolutely nothing except the clothes on my back, and I'll spend all night long in the same cell with Sean Sellers because when I looked in his eyes, I saw the light of Jesus, a transformed man. So why am I saying this? Because, man, the only pole I'm going to be on is the pole of Jesus, man. I'm not going to let anything polarize me. It's Jesus. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Again, I have my convictions. I believe in standing for those convictions, and I vote in line with the convictions from the Word of the living God. And I encourage every believer, if you're voting and you are taking a stand and it is contrary to the Word of God, you need to repent. I'll say it boldly. But I'm not going to alienate anybody. 
I'm going to reach out with the love and the truth of Jesus because God got to Sean Sellers as jacked up, messed up, as demonized as, as he was to shoot his own mama and daddy in their own bedroom in my home state of Oklahoma. God still loved that boy and reached out and transformed his life. Man, we are the ones that step on the scene and say, uh uh, not on my watch. What the Lord told me is there's a lot of confusion. And I'll put it, I'll lay it at the feet of who is rightly deserving. It's the devil that's been peddling, that's been propagating. Say, the devil is the propagator of the agenda of confusion, misinformation, disinformation. He is the liar. He is the father of lies. Oh, but I stand in the truth. I have the truth living in me. His name is Jesus, and I am one with him. So I walk by that truth. I live by the truth, and I liberate by that truth. What the Lord told me exactly was confusion, if not judged, will ultimately bring perversion. Confusion, if not confronted, and if not judged, and the only way you can confront confusion, you can't confront confusion if you're confused yourself. The lost can't save the lost. The blind can't lead the blind. Are you hearing me? And that's what some people think. They're well, I got a little bit of something that's hopeful, but they're still a little bit confused, and they're trying to get those that are confused out of confusion. Hunting doesn't work that way. Those who stand in truth and have clarity, say clarity, clarity. comes from truth. Clarity, clarity comes from truth. And clarity, when given from truth, coupled with love, can set free anyone if they'll simply say yes. Even if their heads are confused. That Quebecois girl, her head was confused, but I got her out of her head looking down into her spirit and her heart because salvation is of the heart. It's not of the head. Spiritual matters are perceived and are attained by faith, which flows out of the spirit of man. I got her looking at it. Like a little kid, you take them to, to a theme park, and man, they're excited, and you tell them this and that, and oh, we're going to ride on this ride, and it's the story of this, and they just believe any little thing because they're just so full of faith. They're more in tune with their spirit, their uh, conscience that's still pure Amen. than they are confusing, conflicting thoughts in their brain. So I got that Quebecois girl looking down on the inside. Next thing you know, she stepped right over her head and was born again. Said, I will believe. She told her head to shut up. And then my wife began to be, began the renewing of her mind. Hallelujah. We need to love people. Listen, right now in our society, people are thinking they're this, that, and the other. And cats and dogs and kittens and weird. I mean, I, and a Martian, a purple Martian from the planet Venus. It's some serious confusion going on. And I'm going to call it for what it is. But Jesus in one moment will bring clarity to the most confused, afflicted. Listen, when people get in that level of confusion, there is not peace. Confusion doesn't bring peace. The Prince of Peace brings peace. And when we introduce people to the Prince of Peace, whoo, Thank you, Lord. he gives them a whole new beginning. Hallelujah. He wipes all that garbage out, that confusion out, and says, let me put my very own spirit, my very own essence, my very own DNA on the inside. Let me tell you how to think about yourself. Let me show you who you really are. See, God wasn't confused. Amen. God wasn't confused in the womb when he assigned things like gender, when he assigned the beautiful color of our skin. Glory to God. Woo! 
one old boy in my home home state, Arkansas. I always love meeting people from different cultures, man, because I love the world. I love, oh man, I love all nationalities. I love all the different variations of skin tone because God made it all, glory to God. He loves it all. And so I was talking to this guy working behind the cashier and, you know, knew because of his accent and he, he looked Middle Eastern. I knew he was from one of those nations, but I couldn't place it. And there was an old boy stocking some of the vending items, you know, that you have there. And I said, man, do you know, you come in here regularly, do you know what nationality is? Oh, no, I, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm colorblind. I don't look. And I thought, what an asinine statement. To me, that's the most insulting thing ever. I'm colorblind. No, God made all the beautiful cultures and colors. I celebrate them because we're going to be celebrating together. Amen. Celebrating around the throne of God, every tribe, every tongue, every kindred, glory to God, every color. Hallelujah. I celebrate that. But that guy had got some confusion. He thought he was being good. No, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, no, I was like, man, I love people. Amen. The world knows the real deal. When you just share out of a heart of love, man, they sense love flowing out of you. They sense the genuine, and it pricks their heart. It touches them. It opens them up to receive him and be transformed forever. I believe there are some heavy-duty areas that have been controlled and dominated by darkness that God is sending us into. Jesus was a gentleman. When they request that he leave, he left, but he left someone behind that they could not argue with. They left someone behind with a testimony, hallelujah. No one can nullify your testimony, my brother, my sister. No one can take your testimony away from you. Amen. That man wanted to follow Jesus in the way he said, no. He goes, say, go to your home friend, homeland. Go to your friends. Tell them the wonderful things that God has done Amen. for you. Sometimes the great dis greatest discipleship program is go. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of almost always the greatest discipleship program. No, we should always be learning. We should always be growing. But didn't Jesus say go? Yes. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Guys, even in Peru, I mean, I evangelized year one. I live with family. I said, I want to go to the darkest, toughest areas. They said, that's Abankai. It's rough. There's only one spirit-filled church there. And I got there, and it was only like the pastor and two others. Even his wife didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And man, we were there the week of the dead, and someone got up and sounded like the death drums on top of the building right when I was preaching. I didn't go crawl in the closet and call 911. No, I preached the louder. Because we were setting up to come in there and do an open-air crusade when we drove into that town, the cross was on top, the tops of houses, but right beside it were two little idols. They treated the cross just as another little charm, hopefully to ward off evil spirits. I did crusades in that area. Mighty miracles happened in that area. I might have shared last time I was here. A deaf girl from age three had been beaten by her alcoholic father. Deaf, she was 26 years old, hadn't heard all those years because one of the beatings resulted in some form of damage to her brain, her ears, she had not heard. God opened her ears second night of that outdoor crusade. We got it on video, carried it to the local TV station that we were running advertisements. Miracles were, will happen in your meeting, come, or in your city, come to these outdoor meetings. Come on. The owner of the network, did I share this story last time I was here? The owner of the network was a very proud religious man. He was very Catholic. And he would not come to our meetings. But when he saw little Maria healed, he said, I drive by this girl every day in my SUV driving into the TV station. I see where she stands and sits on the side of the road. I know she's deaf. Can you bring her here? And can I test her? I said, we don't have anything to hide. We brought Maria. That man tested her. 
he came undone. He said, I'm going to give you a one-hour special. You're making a new commercial featuring Maria. I'm going to help you get that out, but I'm not stopping there. I'm making a one-hour uh, story. The mir I'm going to call it the miracle of Abin Kai, the miracle of Maria. And I'm going to broadcast it all over this region. Right there, a Mr. Prominent businessman that would not come to a crusade because of the miracle of Maria bowed and prayed and received Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. It became so amazing, that dark area was no longer dark. Man, now it might have been still a little bit confused and weird. I had a lady stop me one night walking to the meeting. The last several nights we went from outdoors into this upper room. We wanted to start transferring the growth of all the new believers into the very few churches that existed there. And a lady grabbed me and she said, are you the healing angel of Brazil? I said, we still haven't been to Brazil. We're about to go to Brazil this summer, first time, praise God. I said, no, I don't know any healing angel in Brazil. She said, well, are you that man on TV? I said, yes, ma'am, I am, through my interpreter. She said, oh, my goodness, you, 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 you have an aura about you, and I don't believe in these things. I'm very skeptical about miracles like this. But she said, there is an aura in and on you. There's this aura shining out that's more powerful than I've ever seen. Isn't it funny? She didn't know if she believed in the God of the universe or his miracles, but she believed in the crystals and the auras and all of this. I said, ma'am, you come and you'll see the miracles yourself tonight and you'll believe. Amen. She said, I'm very skeptical. She had her 18-year-old daughter with her. I said, will you come and you'll see and you won't be skeptical. She said, well, before I leave, will you bless me? She said, I, I, I don't understand this. This aura is more powerful than I've ever seen coming off anyone. Well, that's biblical. I can bless her. I said, sure, I'll bless you in the name of Jesus. It, it, it was this man that saw me then, and he ran up and said, hey, are you this healing angel from Brazil? I said, I don't know any healing angel from Brazil, but I know the healer of all healers. His name's Jesus. He said, will you bless me? I said, come to the meeting tonight. He said, I've got to catch my bus to Lima or I'll miss an appointment. I blessed him. Mama came. I didn't know it, but she had identical uh, twins, two beautiful girls. They both had something wrong from birth in their opposite wrist, and they couldn't do certain movements with that wrist. They couldn't do certain sports because of it. And that night, the Lord Jesus healed both her daughter's wrists by his beautiful power. And mama was the first down front with her daughters giving their lives to Jesus as Savior and Lord. The darkest city, darkest region of Peru at the time. But do you know what? We're encountering people now in Peru that do not even know the gospel. We have to go back to areas like that. We've got to target the 1040 window, but we've got to get back to areas that we thought were already harvest because there's a whole new harvest. There's a whole new generation, just like Sister Barbara was saying, a whole new generation that God's wanting to move mightily through. And he cannot do it if we don't show up and share the good news of who Jesus is. He can't do it without you knowing that there is an S on your chest, that you are that supernatural man, that supernatural woman that will back the devil in and set free. Whether it's legion, whether it's the voodoo priest, whether it's the witch doctor, he wants to move through us to do great and mighty things. Amen. This man grabbed the words of Jesus right away. To the point that just a chapter or two over, Jesus is coming back through these parts, and they're not telling him to leave. He literally has to heal the sick. You look in Mark 7 and read all the way down through 8. He has to heal the sick and minister so much in the region of Decapolis, which means 10 towns or 10 cities. Why? This one man that had been set free out of darkness went and did what Jesus said do. Go tell. 10 towns, 10 cities. The man of the tombs, one encounter with Jesus, became a man of 10 cities because he said yes to Jesus and ran with the vision. Jesus had to up and multiply loaves and fish to feed the 4,000 men. Guys, the 4,000 was not among the Jews. That was the 5,000 men. And I say men because it was men not counting their uh, wives and their children, right? It was among the Gentile 
heathen nations, people groups. Do you know in the same way, Jesus is needing us, the remnant church, to say, I'm going to go out among the Gentile nations of the earth that do not know him, and I'm going to make him known. Y'all meet Pastor Jose Navarro. They're actually finishing up Brazil and going into Peru right now is the plan with Pastor Jose. He's been our director for many years, worked with us many, many years, very accomplished. He was back in Abancay just a few years ago. It was before COVID, and he was in the very areas I had evangelized years ago. Churches flourished, new believers, but he got up among the Quechuan people group, and that's his people. The Quechuan tongue is his first language. He knows Spanish and English very well. And he gave a Bible to a little old Quechua woman, or, or he was sharing from the Bible with a little Quechua woman. And she said, oh, brother, Pastor Jose, oh, I've been so grateful to hear the word of God from you today. Thank you for sharing. I, I just am so grateful when that other minister came and left me this Bible. And he looked down and he's like, that's not a Bible. He said, what in the world is that? And like so many of the older generation Quechuans, many of them are illiterate. And he looked down, and it was a Koran. He said, where did you get this? All the other brother like you came through. As Jose dug, he found out that they were getting the young men from that region, shipping them over, training them overseas in madrasas how to be powerful among that religion and bring it back. They were secretly burying multiple wives, because this is remote Peru area. And they were handing out these different pieces. And that precious woman thought it was a Bible. Guys, the church of the living God needs to rise like never before. Needs to march into the harvest fields. Amen. Needs to shine the light and the manifestations of heaven like never before because there's a world that desperately and dastardly needs the truth. Amen. They're in a dastard state. They're in a state of being despic despicably degraded, debased. This man, because of the confusion that the devil brought in his life and what we're seeing on society's doorstep right now, people are being debased like that lower than animals. That's what the devil does. They need us to show up with the light and the liberty of heaven and free them and cause them to step in to their, their divine being and their divine purpose on this earth. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you've been stirred, you're like, man, there is more to do. There's more for me to walk in, and I want it. The title that I got when this message came to me this year is who you allow him to be in 2023. Who you will allow him to be in you, through you. Who you will allow him to be in you in 2023. He's a gentleman. He never forces us to go next level. But I believe with all our heart, just like the world is so desperately crying out, we the church, there's something in us that's yearning to live that superabundant life of glory, to be that supernatural man, that supernatural woman in him. If you're stirred in any way this morning, hearing my words, raise your hand high all over this place. If you're like, I want more. I want to walk in more. I want to manifest more. I don't care if you've been in this thing like me since you were knee high all your life. If you have a hungering for more, to see the miracles of heaven, the glory of God, to be used in greater levels, raise your hand high all over this place. Hands going up all over. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I got my hand up because it's not enough just to see millions saved. I want to see tens of millions. And then before it's all said and done, I want to have an army of harvesters raised up that were raised up on my watch and my work, our work that will see hundreds of millions swept into the kingdom of God. I want to give another call. If you're here and you say, John, I'm not really sure. I, I'm not sure I'm really where I need to be. There's a little bit of that confusion 
that's shown up on my doorstep. I need some help. I need some truth next level in my life. Please pray for me. Pray with me. Raise your hand high if that's you, if there's anyone like that. I need a little more truth. I need a little more clarity in my life, in my heart. If there is anyone like that, raise your hand high right now, right now. All right. Is there anyone here that says, John, I know that there's people that the Lord has assigned me to reach and I need to step out next level to reach them with the gospel and to flow in miracle signs and wonders. I want you to raise your hand high. Maybe coworkers, maybe co-students, maybe neighbors, maybe folks on the other side of town. Maybe it's a mission trip. Maybe you're stirred after this. Yeah, I want to partner. I want to come front lines. I want to help send. I want to get involved with the divine nine that are going from West Houston, CC, out to Peru. All right, I think almost everybody raised their hands on one of those, so I want everyone in the building to stand on your feet right now. Everyone in the building, stand on your feet. I want you to put your, everyone in the building, put your right hand on your heart. Raise your other hand to heaven. We're gonna pray the prayer of consecrating our lives. We're gonna wrap the prayer of salvation with it, but we're just gonna do it all in one swing right now of the sickle, so to speak. Let's all say this to him. Say it out loud. Mean it with all your heart. Say, Dear God, I believe these things. I know you are real. I know Jesus is real. I know Jesus is the only one as God the Son that paid the price by hanging on the tree, dying on the cross just for me shedding his holy blood so that I could be cleansed and be made fresh and anew, joined with you. I believe that he did take my place of judgment in that moment so that I could be accepted by you. I believe in the mighty miracles he did, that your miracles flowed through him. And the mightiest of all is when you raised him from the dead on the third day, because with him, you raised me. You made a way for me to be freed from spiritual sin and death and step into your abundant life, your eternal life. So right now, I declare Jesus, come into my heart come into my life. I make you my Savior, but I give you my entire life, my talents, my treasure, my time, my abilities. I give them all to you. I make you my Lord. Right now, use me. Fill me overflowing with your spirit of power. Holy Spirit power, thank you, Lord, that you use me to witness to friends and neighbors, to manifest your light, your life, and your glory to the world around me so that they may know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. I commit to it. I'll do it here or even the other side of the planet. Anywhere you bid me come, I will step out of the boat and walk to you, the Son, because I walk by you, I walk in you, and I do all these things through you in Jesus' name. Now, real quickly, in this attitude of prayer, healings and miracles are easy. They're not hard. They don't take long. They happen just like that in our crusades all over the world. Put your hand right back. If you have a pain, a problem, a disorder, you can put your hand where the problem is, on your shoulder, on your throat, on your head. If you've been tormented, if you've been unable to sleep, you can put it on your head. If you feel like there has been torment by bad dreams, or even maybe you felt like, man, there's a curse on me. A curse can't be put on a child of God. It's gonna be fully broken. But wherever the problem is, your legs, your ears, your eyes, put that hand wherever you can touch, or if it's more comfortable and easy just to put it right back on your heart, you can do that as well. 
I'm going to say a brief prayer, and Jesus is going to come to you right where you stand. He's going to touch you right where you are. He's going to place his hand on your hand. He's going to give you freedom, liberty, healing, miracle, a new beginning right now. In the name and authority of Jesus, I command every sickness, every disease, every disorder, every problem, every syndrome, every symptom to go from your body and being now. I command every torment of the enemy to leave your mind and soul now. And the peace of Christ, the peace from the Prince of Peace, to sweep over you in realms you've never experienced before. That passes all understanding in the name of Jesus. Freedom and liberty. They'll be able to sleep in the night seasons. No torment any longer from the enemy. It's broken. It's gone. No curse can manifest any longer in and on them. They are curse-free because you have blessed them indeed. And now I speak to every pain, every problem, whether in the joints, whether rotator cuff, whether shoulders, whether knees, whether elbows, wrists, backs, vertebrae, all the way up through the spine, I command healing right now, right now, right now. In this moment of time, I command disorders, internal ailments, internal diseases, go, blood sugar levels, come up to proper balances right now in Jesus' name. Insulin production, be at proper levels now in Jesus' name. Deaf ears open now, pop open now, right now, here in Jesus' name. Eyes that were dim, open and see, blind eyes, receive light and see in Jesus' name. Internal organs, hearts, livers, lungs, kidneys, digestive systems, be made whole now. Thank you, Lord. Kidneys, bladders functioning properly in the name of Jesus. Male and female organs being healed in Jesus' name. Problems in the brain and the nervous system being ever went whole, being completely made whole now. Tendons, ligaments, muscles be made whole now. Everything I've named and everything I haven't named, even if it's undiagnosable, it bows its knee now and leaves your body and being now by the healing virtue of Jesus. His anointing, His power drives it completely out and you're giving, uh, given a new beginning. You're given a miracle right now. Right now, a complete 100% miracle. Begin now in Jesus' name to do what you could not do because He's flowing right now. Throughout, your, throughout this place and throughout your body, throughout your body, soul and being right now. Move your shoulder, move your knee in Jesus' name. Amen indeed. Amen means so be it. It's done. It's established. Yeah. Swing around, move around. That's right. You can find it's already better. You can find the pains diminishing or completely gone because miracles are happening all over this place, all over this place, all over this place by His divine power, His divine grace. Now, quick, if you say, John, I can tell a tangible difference. I, I feel it. It's, it's something's happened. Raise your hand high. If you can tell a tangible, physical difference, raise your hand high. Amen. Keep it up. Keep it up. If you say, no, I can tell a difference right now. All right, just call out from right where you are, right down here in front, Jack. Shoulder. What's, what's different? Looser. Super tight. How much better is it, would you say? What percentage? 90%, almost completely done. It's, it, the rest of it's happening right now. Right here, sister in purple, what, what was wrong? My foot hurt all the time, and it's not hurting at all. Not hurting at all, all the time. How long had it been that way? Three months. Three months, a miracle. Jesus does it again, praise the Lord. There was a, a right back here, yes, in the uh, AV area. Tendons in your left hand, what had happened? really stiff. And, and how long had it been that way? A good year. Just do that, hold it up, move it around like that, clench it, make God glad, the devil mad. Any tightness or is it totally loose? What percentage better would you say it is? 80, praise God. Amen, amen, you got your miracle. It's in motion right now. It's gonna go all the way to 100%, you got it, praise God. Is that Chesley? Okay, praise God. Right back here, the man in the blazer. Yes, sir. Your neck. Na 
Amen. 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 You felt it. How long had, was it stiffness or pain, my brother? Eight years. Go ahead and move it around. Make God glad, the devil mad. Hallelujah. The devil can't do anything. Amen. How much better would you say it is right at this moment? What percentage? Yeah, no, no, you've got your miracle. I see your faith. You've got it. But tangibly right now, it's already 50% better after eight years of suffering, it sounds. Is that correct? Oh, Jesus does it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody on this side? We were mainly hitting from here over. Anybody? Just real quickly. Right back in the back. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Jesus does it again. <clears throat> Anybody else? Real quick. This last one. Yes, ma'am. Right here. Right knee. How long has it been hurting, would you say? About a month. All the time or off and on? All the time. What happened? You have something. And then right now, what, what took place? Not hurting. Amen. Do this, sister. Praise God. Just stomp it gently. Just stomp it. Try to find the pain. You won't be able to. Any pain at all? Jesus does it again. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We praise you, ancient of days. Everyone that was healed or as we were taking testimonies, listen, more miracles are still happening. Don't let go of what just was imparted, just like our brother. Boy, he's right on. He grabbed a hold of it. Listen, it's happening in your body. It's happening in your body. These young two brothers over here, did y'all have something wrong? You have the striped shirt and you have the gray shirt. Were you guys, I thought I saw one of you laying hands on, are you better? What was wrong, young man? How long had it been hurting you? Two years, how's it doing now? Way looser, amen. Hey, was it hard to run or do anything better? Was it anything hard to do? Bending over, get out in the aisle and bend over. Bend over a few times. What's your name, young man? What's his name? Edward. Edward. Go ahead, Edward, check it out. Look, he's all the way down. Say that again. You don't think, feel anything? Go all the way down again. I don't even think I could go that far with my legs straight. Boy, he's touching the ground. You didn't, how's it feel? Any pain at all? Jesus does it again. Praise God, Edward. Amen. Everyone that says, John, I've had a mir miracle manifestation. There's a tangible difference. Right now, I could, have, I, I could say there is a tangible difference. Raise your hand high. We want to get a count. We want to get a count. If I could have two ushers confirm this number, someone yell it out uh, of the ushering st uh, staff or crew. And then if another usher could confirm, I believe in having an order. I was an accounting major, so. 14, praise. 14, we had two people, praise God. God bless you, we love you. Go out and give them heaven from here to the other side of the planet, Pastor Jack. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated real briefly. Well, we have our, you know what I like? the best about what we just did and he didn't even say it but it's the joy of what he does and that's how you know it's real he didn't get up and tell us how hard it is over there and how I'm just taking my coffin and taking my family to go to die for Jesus over on the mission field that's the difference that's real that's why we sow into ministries like this because it's real it's fun to run with Jesus, because you get to do this kind of stuff, amen, be a part of miracles, see people get saved, we want to take an opportunity to be a blessing, that was fantastic, my brother, thank you, thank you, thank you, that was fantastic, please give him another hand, that was awesome, if you would like to sow specifically into this, obviously we encourage you, you should be partnering with ministers like this. He has opportunities for you to partner with him specifically. If you would like to sow into this meeting because this is the meeting you were in, then I want to give you that opportunity. You can make out your checks to WHCC 
Uh, if you're giving a cash offering, just write on the envelope, designate it that it's for him. If you're giving online, designate that it's for our guest speaker today, and I will, um, uh, every bit of it will go to him um, ASAP. Amen. I've got two baskets up here in the middle, and so I'm just going to humbly ask you to stand. Miss Robin's going to play, and as you feel led, please come sow. Come sow in faith. You're sowing into the nations. Amen. You're free to come. great day. Amen. And we're not done yet. Can you smell it? It's a coming. You know, we wanted to do this fundraiser today with Brother John here, and it's to raise funds for the, the, the Divine Nine that as of right now we're going. It's still not too late to go. You can still sign up to go. Uh, for, for our Peru trip, we are leaving uh, June the 30th, and we'll be back, I believe, July the 7th. It's a 10-day trip, and uh, there's some paperwork and things that you need to work through, but you can go to their website, and uh, if you would still like to be a part of that, or you can sow into us that are going, or you can be a part of the church here that's praying for us while we're there. But we get to go do exactly what you just saw here. We get to go flow in miracles and go into schools and, you know, focus and give 10 days into the work of God uh, in South America, and I'm excited about it. So... If you purchased a meal and you know who you are, then uh, I'm going to let you, if you have your children, then you can go get your children. My daughter Emily and Leslie are in the back. Would y'all wave? Come closer where everybody can see you. See the dynamic duo in the back? The one wearing the cow pants. That's my daughter. Amen. Uh, then you will go through her. You will check in with your uh, the text that you should have received. You'll be seated. Then we'll get you fed. Amen. Are you glad you came to church today? I am so glad. We had an awesome day today. Let's stand to our feet. Father, I thank you that this is the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I pray over the food. I call it blessed. We declare sickness and illness and calories out of our midst, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the goodness of fellowship and being in your presence and with one another. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You're dismissed.